So welcome to the online video lecture for the subject electrical machines two, and the topic I would like to discuss is uh, starting and speed control of induction motors. That is the third part. So earlier we have seen seen the two sessions. Okay. So coming to the introduction now of this uh, starting of the induction motor. So let us recall the few basic things. It has been found that three phase induction motor is a self starting motor. Okay. So because of its high starting torque. So it, be, it has become a self-starting, whereas a single phase is not. Okay. So next. So only parameter is that in a three-phase induction motor there exists the rotating magnetic field, and whereas coming to the single-phase induction motor there exists the pulsating magnetic field. So that is the only difference. Okay. So that is the reason why self uh, single-phase induction motors are not self-starting. Okay. Next, when a three-phase supply is given to the three-phase wound rotor. I mean, wound stator of an induction motor, a rotating field is developed. So of course, it is applicable for both the slip ring induction motor and the, uh, I mean, uh, squirrel gauge rotors. Okay. Next, uh, it develops the rotating magnetic field. We know that. So how the RMF is developed, how it is going to be in, uh, interacted with the uh, rotor, how the uh, electrical power is converted to the mechanical, all these things. Okay. Just uh, highlighting only the uh, basic things. By induction, an EMF is induced in the rotor conductors, and the torque develops, and the rotor starts rotating. Okay, but if the motor is directly switched on to the supply, so it draws the heavy current from the mains due to the inertia of rotor. So that's what it means. If we go for a high inertia loads, because the purpose of we are going to take the advantage of the induction motor. So what is the advantage there? It has a high starting torque. So when we prefer these motors, means if there are high inertia loads. So we have to keep on that uh, keep on that uh, that point. Okay. So DC series motor. Why we prefer the DC series motors means it has a high starting torque. So likewise, so that uh, earlier the, those uh, motors are used for the traction purpose. But uh, all those things, uh, uh, if we consider the elevators or hoists or uh, I mean uh, cranes, everywhere all these uh, machines has been replaced with uh, three phase induction motors. Of course, the tractions also. Okay, so why we prefer in the sense we are taking the advantage of this high starting torque. So when we prefer the high starting torque means they, there we are going to connect the high inertia loads. Okay, right. So if we are connecting the high inertia loads means we have seen all those problems. What are the problems which are which are going to be raised there? Okay. So for that what we are what we need to do. So before going for this uh, starting control method. So why we have to uh, choose this starting method? Let us discuss. So based on which criteria? Thus, a device is required to limit the inrush flow of current at the start, which is called the starter. Okay. So we need to limit the inrush. So why the inrush current appears means because of the high inertia loads, or uh, uh, the current drawn by the machine will be very high, at the, especially at the rotor. So. If you are you are well known about that, uh, if there are high inrush currents. Means we need to limit that. If not limited, what happens? So frequent there may be if, uh, failure of the rotor conductors because of the overheat. Okay, or else even though if it has the uh, short circuit capability for a short period of time, it can be even it can withstand also the span of the coil gets reduced. The coil span gets reduced. Okay, because of continuous heating. Or because of the continuous inrush current, so, so what uh, like the, with these issues, with these issues, so what happens? Uh, the uh, the machine efficiency gets reduced because of the, the frequent uh, overheating. Okay, that is the case. So that is why we need to limit the inrush currents, and for that we need to prefer a starter. Okay. Next, once the motor picks up the speed and takes up the load, there are many applications where regulated speed is required. So okay, so we are uh, we are not bothered about after it has reached reached the rated speed. So there are different methods. So variable frequency drives are there. Of course, many control methods are there. But before giving the supply to the machine, when the load is connected, so we need to uh, make certain process there. We need to control the process there. So later on we can uh, think about how further speed is controlled. So that means once the speed is re reached to rated. When it, once it is reached to the steady, uh, stability, I mean, once it reaches to the uh, final rated parameters, that, that means either if you take the, uh, I mean, uh, rated current or uh, rated speed, everything. Okay. So once it has reached the final value, we are not bothered about that. So before reaching the final value, we need to take certain measures. 
so for that this is the that is why we go for the starting methods to fulfill this requirement various means and methods have been devised that means invented there okay so let us see necessity of starter so why we go for simply we have said that uh, high inverse currents will flows so on which equation we are going to uh, say that statement so on which equation uh, i mean based on which equation we are going to uh, give the statement that uh, it has high inverse currents means let us see the current drawn by a motor from the mains depends on the rotor current okay so why means this rotor is connected through the shaft to the load okay so when the loads get increased what happens uh, the weight on the machine I mean, I mean the mechanical load is because of this mechanical load the speed gets reduced and it tries to uh, draw the huge amount of current uh, at the same instant the voltage gets reduced there okay so during this process the uh, the current tries to reach the uh, rated rated value so that, that depends upon the load okay so in the name plate itself uh, they will be giving so how much amount of uh, mechanical load can be applied so based on your loading the current will be raised okay so that we have seen in the uh, brake test right so with increase in the load there will be increase in the load current okay so load current in the sense there we are uh, considering the rotor current okay right the rotor current under running condition is given by so i2r or i2 something that's up to you so if you, that depends upon the uh, condition so there exist two cases as we have seen one is running condition which starts from s equal to 0 there but actually we are not substituting s equal to 0 there should be certain slip value okay and the standstill condition where s equal to 1 so that is the final value so our our limitations are between 0 to 1 so s equal to 0 to 1 there okay so this is the equation which we have uh, our derived earlier in the previous sessions we have seen the proof i2 r equal to s into e2 s y root of r2 square plus s into x2 s whole square so where uh, reactance so you know this value so actually it is e2 by root of r2 square plus x2 square under running conditions what is the relation there between the what is the relation between the induced emf and the reactance rotor reactance with respect to slip means e2 equal to s into e2 s or s into e2 similarly reactance x2 equal to s into x2 okay so under running conditions it depends upon the slip value if slip equal to 1 means let us see this equation there uh, second box you can see when slip equal to s equal to 1 therefore the rotor current i2 r equal to substitute s equal to 1 there so e2 s by root of r2 square plus x2 s whole square so this is the maximum current so why we are discussing about the s equal to 1 means uh, that should not happen but uh, that is the extreme case so there the rotor remains locked there so lock means what happens it draws the huge amount of current so before uh, i mean how can we analyze the machine whether it has the rated current or how can we uh, define what is the rated current of the uh, machine means it depends upon this equation that is the slip value if slip equal to 1 so there the rotor is going to be blocked there so in at that particular instant huge amount of his current is drawn there but actually the, the machine never rotates but few maximum amount of current is drawn by the machine okay so for that analysis we can use this equation okay so if not let us uh, take any other slip value that is uh, 0.3 or 0 0.4 0 0.5 that's up to you if you substitute that we can get the current at that particular slip what is the current drawn by the machine we can calculate okay so with this equation so that is the condition two conditions there running condition and standstill condition so running condition means let it be uh, no need to substitute any value there uh, keep it as uh, it remains same okay so there exists the s value okay and in standstill we need to substitute s equal to 1 okay right the current is very large as compared to its full load current okay as i said you before so uh, the we can never achieve, we can uh, the motor never comes to the standstill actually it has to, it should not be happened okay but for the what is the maximum rated uh, capacity how can we calculate means with the help of the slip value okay so this is the extreme case right so when the rotor is completely blocked there it never rotates but actually what about the industrial applications the machine has to rotate 
there should there may be particular slip value uh, okay so are you able to follow me next uh, thus when a squirrel gauge induction motor is directly connected to the supply mains it draws a very large current nearly 5 to 7 times of the full load current from the mains why means see look at this from the, if we consider this equation okay so uh, this uh, denominator part is very less you know what is the internal resistance in the rotor there and uh, reactance offered there okay if this becomes low what happens obviously a huge amount of current will be drawn and it may be 5 to 7 times of the full load current so let us consider the full load current is around 10 amps okay 5 to 7 times means you can expect it is around 50 to 70 okay so which is which is very dangerous to the mission of course practically we are going to use the fuses so that uh, if any situation happens or if if any of the equipment failed there okay so what happens uh, with the help of these fuses uh, we are going to isolate the machine so that the machine is protected there okay but for the theoretical analysis we have seen that so it will be five to seven times so initially the current is very high okay so that is the situation of the machine so this heavy current may not be dangerous for the motor but because it occurs for a short circuit duration of time as i said you before see uh, this is the uh, s equal to one means that is the extreme case. Okay, so it happens under after reaching from g s equal to zero to one there. Okay, even though if it has happened, see, uh, see uh, the value is five to seven times of the rated current means. On which point they have said this uh, statement means? Look at here, heavy current may not be dangerous for the big because it occurs for a short circuit. Okay, it occurs for a short circuit. Short circuit in the sense, what is the case? standstill condition okay that should, that is never happens there okay next it produces a large voltage drop in the distribution line and thus affects the voltage regulation of the supply system so as, I, as we have discussed in this point out in the previous session then if it is connected to the transmission lines so what happens because of this effect so there may be large voltage regulation means what, what is the case there there will be huge voltage drop in the line Okay, so it is going to affect the entire the system because number of parallel connected loads will be there. So with uh, with these uh, dynamic performances, what happens? The voltage levels gets reduced. So there the actual actually the voltage should be constant there. Okay, that is one of the drawback there, and uh, we need to regulate that. So keep it in uh, keep it in uh, mind that uh, we need to regulate the voltage. Next, it adversely affects the other motors and connected to the same lines so that's what i said so because all the loads are parallel connected so many of the loads of course even in our household appliances also if any of the load is uh, unable to perform a healthy operation so it uh, it may perform some dynamic uh, behavior it has some dynamic behavior obviously other loads also will be affected okay so what we are going to do we are going to isolate that appliances suppose if you consider a refrigerator so or if you other consider any other uh, I mean, uh, I mean, washing machine and all. So it is not performing a, a healthy operation big, uh, when it is turned on, when it is drawing a huge amount of uh, current or uh, some other voltage drops are happening. If you observe any flickering in our uh, appliances, in other appliances, obviously we are going to put off the machine so that other loads will not be get disturbed. So similar fashion in the transmission lines also, if any induction motors is performing the same behavior, it has the same behavior. Obviously, it is going to disturb the other loads also okay so at this situation we need to isolate the load so that other loads will not get disturbed next hence it is not advisable to start large capacity induction motors by direct switching okay so because of all these drawbacks what we have discussed rather such motors should be started by means of some starting device known as starter so that is the that is the intention of the starter why we have preferred the starter because of all these behaviors the function of a starter is to limit the inlet's initial rush of current to a predetermined value. So, from reaching the zero to or from reaching to a minimum to final value. So, between this process, we are going to use the starter. Let us see. The starter also some uh, also has some protective devices to protect the induction motors against overload. Let us see one by one based upon their type of uh, starting methods. Okay, coming to let's come into the starting methods of squirrel gauge induction motors. Next, 
the various starters which are employed to restrict the initial rush of current in spiral gauge induction motors are given below so let us discuss one by one that is a direct online starter which is also called dol starter next a primary resistance or induction starter and the other is a star or delta starter or star to delta starter it can be termed as star to delta starter also and the last thing and that is the fourth one auto transformer starter okay let us discuss the dol starter okay that is a direct online starter it is a starter by which the motor is switched on directed direct to the supply mains by switching conductor okay with the normal industrial motors this operation results in a heavy rush of current of the order of 5 to 7 times of the normal full load current so this is the uh, point which we have discussed before that with the because the initial current will be very high it, it will be around 5 to 7 times of the final value that is the final current that is a rated current okay so that is a situation this high current rapidly decreases as the motor picks up the speed but it is a very low power factor and thus tends to disturb the voltage of the supply in the distribution lines okay so because of the huge current what happens so obviously uh, the voltage levels will be less because uh, why in the sense of because it it is it depends on the torque there okay i mean it will be reflected on the torque if the supply voltage is getting varied means what, what happens so obviously uh, this supply voltage is uh, connected to the lines it is parallel connected there if one of the loads are not pro operating properly means obviously it will reflect on the line through the reactive power variations and of course we are not going in detail of the reactive power there but this is the interrelated thing okay if the voltage is not constant means definitely there will be some reactive power variations and that that uh, component is going to reflect on the other loads okay so that is the case why other loads are getting disturbed for this reason the supply authorities limit the size of the motor up to 5 hp which can be started by the starter so that is the case why they have preferred the 5 uh, they have given the limitation but now right now this may be uh, different okay so as per according to that period of time so they have given that the 5 hp is the size of the motor maximum size of the motor there okay so let us discuss the dol starter see here, look at the diagram here so this is this three phase supply okay either it may be connected to the transmission lines or uh, any other industrial applications okay so this is the three phase supply let us consider it as r y b here okay next there is a main switch so this switch may be an mcb also that is a miniature circuit breaker also okay next we can see the uh, a small plunger here okay so this is the no volt no volt release coil or a no volt coil next uh, this is the on off button so basically it will be green color and it will be in uh, red color say so like this practically it, it will be physical appear, uh, appearance of the dual starter is like this okay next so this is the overload relay so thermal overload relay actually it is a thermal overload relay okay so it will be having some uh, metallic uh, strip so based upon the their movement we are going to isolate the this contactor so that is uh, pull towards and uh, to uh, towards and on uh, i mean forward and reverse direction okay next this is the stator winding okay so these are the three phases and this is the spiral gauge rotor part okay so look look at the connection here so when the when we are going to turn on this mcb okay we have given the supply to the machine but it is not uh carry forward to the load so there we have can see the uh, no volt coil there okay so for this no volt coil uh, through this on and off buttons look at here initially the off button is closed there and the off button is on button is open so what about this uh, circuit connection look at here let us consider it as r y b so b this is the contact b here so through this b so the circuit is continued here and it is break, uh, there is a discontinuous here okay once the contact is closed here then only it will be having continuity okay so let us see what about the remaining part so it is traveling through the overload line okay 
next between the uh, and it is traveled to the r phase so between two phases we have connected this nvr a novelt coil or novelt release coil okay so look uh, from this we can uh, analyze that between the two phases we have connected this okay next and what about this overload overload coil so it depends upon the relay here okay under normal mode this contact will be closed here okay so when any abnormal conditions happen this is going to be uh, pushed here i mean it is going to release this so obviously the continuity will be open uh, breaked there okay so there is no continuity let us see the point by point how this operates okay so that's about the connection part next to start the motor the on push button green is press which energize the no volt coil by connecting it across two phases so what we are going to perform initially so this is the construction part of the dvl starter so now we are going to perform the uh, working i mean now we are let us see the procedure how we are going to use this uh, dvl starter and how it is going to perform so when we are uh, uh, i mean pressing on this on button what happens here the circuit is closed of course before that we need to give the we need to turn on the main switch okay so what happens when uh, between the two phases uh, this nvr is connected once the circuit is closed see if we close this what happens so what happens so here nvr is going to energize so nvr in the sense it is nothing but an iron piece uh, it, it has certain uh, coils which are turned to it okay it is nothing but in a small iron piece uh, which has certain see look at here it, is, it has internally some iron piece and a, a coil is turned to it so what happens when a supply is given it acts as a magnet so here it acts as a magnet and it is going to attract this i mean it is going to attract the uh, this uh, what we can say it's a nothing but a plunger see now no volt coil pulls it plunger in such a direction that all the normally open contacts are closed and the motor is connected across the supply through the three contacts see look at here when it is going to be energized so when the iron which is turned with a, some uh, copper coils when the supply is given to that it acts as a magnet and it is going to uh, attract this uh, uh, plunger so plunger in the sense it's not in, at, uh, having some spring action or okay so it is going to attract and what happens all the three phase supplies given to the uh, i mean there is there is a continuity here so with the, with help of these three contacts we are going to supply the three phase to the machine so that is the stator wind okay right before that we need to think how this uh, plunger is moved there so we are not performing any physical action there so it is automatically going to have some the movement how this movement it depends upon the energy energize of the coil that is a no volt coil okay so when soon after pressing the on button so between the two phases the nvr is connected and it is going to be energized and uh, this action is performed here so that the three phase is supplied to the stator winding okay next the fourth contact serves as a hold on current which keeps the no volt coil circuit closed even after the on person on push button is released see this is the fourth contact okay so when uh, it is uh, energized so this plunger is moved and here the continuity will be there so look look at here so when this contact is uh, attached here so it will be having the continuity there okay here the circuit is closed and it is also helpful for hold on the current okay next to stop the motor the off push button uh, that is which is in red color is pressed no momentarily which de energize the no volt coil opening the main contacts simple simple thing is that uh, if we push the on, off button what happens so there is no continuity between the two phases uh, in which the nvr is connected the no volt coil is connected so when the off button is pushed there so there is no continuity and the, there is no current there obviously no current in the sense whatever the uh, coil produced in magnetic field okay it is going to be de energized so earlier due to continuous flow of current it is energized okay so it has performed the action there now when it is uh, demagnetized or uh, deenergized what happens because of the when the off button is pressed so it is going to release the uh, uh, plunger here so that the three phase is removed there 
okay so two cases we have seen one is on on uh, on case and another is off case okay let us see the other case that is the overload case when the motor is overloaded the thermal overload relay contact connected in the control circuit opens thus disconnecting the no volt relay from the supply see so when the machine has reached the overload so how can you say that the machine is overload so that depends upon the loading capability as we have discussed earlier in some of the machines they will be giving 1.5 times or 1.12 times or i mean 15% or 12% they may exceed the overload okay so based upon the temperature raised in the coil okay so with the help of the or a thermostat or some other uh, thermo sensors they will be used okay so and the metallic strip is going to be heated there and it is going to perform the action so that here the contact is moved there so when the contact is removed means what happens again there will be there is no continuity in this coil okay so in, sorry in this conductor so this we need to analyze under the running condition not in the off condition okay so under the non condition what happens there is continuity here so when the temperature rises this uh, thermal overload relay is going to be excited and it removes the contact here it pushes the contact here so that the continuous current is breaked here and again what happens there is no supply to the nvr and again it deenergizes and re releases this plunger okay so that the supply is removed so three cases we have seen one is on case other is the off case and this is the overload case so this is how the dol starter is performed okay so this is how uh, we are going to protect the machine with the help of the uh, overload relay okay so if any abnormal conditions happen based upon the temperature rise we are going to perform the we are going to protect the equipment with the help of dol starter direct online starter next let us see the some basic equations there overload protection is achieved by thermal element overload relay so that's what i said that is nothing but a metallic strip there which is placed in the thermal overload relay you can see the from other sources how the relay coils appears to be okay so we are not focused on that uh, relay coil just we need uh, we are discussing that there is a thermal relay coil so based upon the temperature rise the coil will operate okay so the torque developed by the motor when started by dol starter is the power developed in the rotor or rotor input equal to omega t so that is the fundamental equation there p equal to omega t and the rotor copper equal to s into rotor input so it depends upon the slip there so which is equal to s into omega t and also the copper losses means how the power is developed in the coil means it is in the form of heat there and which is equal to 3 into i square r so i mean the rotor current i2 and the r2 the rotor resistance per phase and the torque developed t where omega is the angular velocity and s is the slip okay so and we are going to equate the equation 1 and 2 so what is equation 1 here so s equal to omega s into omega t and equation 2 3 i2 square r2 so we are going to equate these two equations and we get s omega t equal to 3 i2 square into r2 okay next uh, from this equation what we get t equal to 3 i2 square r2 by s into omega okay so again this equation can be written as t is proportional to i2 square by s okay so torque is inversely proportional to slip here since the rotor resistance and supply frequency is constant okay next so from the equation that we uh, we can also rely that uh, t is proportional to i1 square by omega because there exist copper losses in both the stator and rotor so by using that equation we can make this uh, statement that as stator current is proportional to rotor current so that is t is proportional to i1 square by omega also which is equal to k so k means where uh, some other constant okay so i think you know the static uh, starting uh, torque equation t equal to uh, or t is proportional to uh, phi i mean t is uh, equal to k into e2 i2 cos phi2 i hope you remember this equation okay so from that uh, we have maintained a, we have so segregated the constant parameters that is phi is i mean phi is constant if the input is constant there e2 is constant likewise okay so where k is the constant and uh, we are uh, varying the uh, current is varied because we are applying loading there so obviously the current is also getting varied with respect to the omega at start 
slip equal to one. Okay. If we consider the slip value one, obviously t equal to k into i one square over omega. And from this, uh, look at this equation there. Ta ta starting torque t s t equal to k into i s t whole square. Okay. So that is obtained from the uh, the fundamental equation there. Okay. So look at here. So t equal to uh, omega in the sense uh, s equal to one in the sense that is a standstill case there. Okay, so that is why we have eliminated this omega there. So where I S T is the starting current. Next, so from this the full load torque with respect to slip we can write it as T F L equal to K I S L whole square by, uh, K I S L square by S into S F L. Okay, where I S L is the full load current and S F L is the full load slip. So I hope I remember that at particular slip we can reach the maximum torque. Okay, where we have defined it as SM there. In the previous sessions, we have defined that SM or medium range slip. At that particular slip, uh, we can reach the maximum torque. So that is the case. That is why we have uh, again inserted this equation. So TFL equal to K ISL square by SFL. Okay, now we need to equate this equation three and four. Okay, so from equation three and four, so we are, uh, we are getting this value that is substitute K IST square by k isl square by SF, sfl okay so we get ist by what ist by ifl whole square into s into fl so obviously starting dot tst equal to so from this equation we have written that tfl into ist by ifl whole square into s into fl so further uh, when the motor is connected to the mains by the DOL starter, the starting current of the motor is equal to the short circuit current. So that is the IS. So this is how uh, the starting current or the starting torque is limited there. Okay. I mean, the current is made equal to the uh, short circuit current. I mean, the final current is made to the short circuit current. Okay. With the help of this uh, uh, DOL starter there. A small correction uh, that is a IFL there instead of ISL there and here it is a SFL that is a full load current full load current in the sense the maximum current there okay so this is how the current is limited I mean instead of reaching the five to seven times of the final value we have made equal to the the final current okay so that's about the dual starter so in the next session we will discuss about the uh, or start a stator resistance starter so hope you have understood this session thank you